Elizabeth thought I was one of ARMY's chicks. But there is a lot more to this story. You have to face what you've done. This is insanity. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny Murphy. And I'm Evan Real. And if we look a little more sun-kissed than usual if you're watching on YouTube, it's because we quite literally just got back from the Cayman Islands where we spent a few days partying like reality stars with reality stars. And Evan, you're kind of down for the count from it. I don't know if you could, you have what it takes to live in the Grand Caymans. I, I don't know. I came back totally wiped out and exhausted. I don't know how these people do it. But yeah, Danny and I hung out with the new cast of Freeform's Grand Cayman Secrets in Paradise. It was so much fun. We had like the most luxurious, insane experience. There was a whole day on a catamaran. We had lunch on the beach. We swam with stingrays. But most of all, we got to know these new reality stars. And most of them are reality TV rookies. But there is one one girl in particular who, who many of you know. Mm-hmm. You have most likely seen her on TV, and you might even have eaten a baked good made by her. And no, you're not related to her because usually you just eat baked goods from your friends or families, but not other than Elizabeth Chambers. Yes, Elizabeth Chambers. She she kind of is like the star of the show. She's right there smack dab in the middle of the poster for Grand Cayman. So we kicked off a big day of interviews with the whole cast with Elizabeth at her bird bakery in Grand Cayman. And uh, can we just say, it is like the most luxurious, oh. cutest, most adorable bakery situation we've ever seen. So we're sitting there chatting with Elizabeth next to all these cupcakes that we just wanted to gobble up right there. But we couldn't because we had to ask her some questions. And she had, a, she had a lot of things to say. She had a lot of things to say because of course she's known for so many things. One of those, especially on the island, is uh, her relationship with Army Hammer. She is his ex-wife. And we were able to kind of talk to her about kind of reclaiming the legacy that she's leaving for her family on the island and how she is helping her kids through everything. But they're thriving because she says it's a magical time for them. They're just making their baked goods, having fun at the beach, you know, kind of living their best life. It's Actually. also really cool to see you in this light because there's been so much speculation about your life over the past several years. Yeah. And now you get to share your story on your own terms. How does that feel? I mean, it's good. I think my mom always says nobody ever regrets taking the high road. So forever. I just have, and also like, no, we don't need to have any conversations in public. Like what happens in my family stays in my family. What happens in my personal life stays in my personal life. And so if people want to have ideas or speculation or think that they know a reality that is not a reality, like they don't. My family does, my close friends do. And it's ultimately like, that's the only opinion that matters right. to me. Like if I'm being a terrible fit person, my sister will tell me. So as long as my sister's like, Go, you're good. I'm good. I don't care what anyone else says. Was it tough to take that approach when your castmates had so many questions, thoughts, and opinions about your life? Um, I think that people are always going to have questions, thoughts, and opinions. And I think the minute we care or, mm -hmm. you know, are not looking for something other than constructive criticism, like how can I help, then that's when we kind of lose the plot. Mm. You have one thought at a time. I'm not going to waste my thought at a time on what people think of me. I'm going to waste, I'm going to spend my thoughts on building my brands, focusing on my kids, creating things that matter mm -hmm. because ultimately everything else is a waste. You're not going to change anyone's opinion about yourself. Yeah. And I feel so much because like even from talking to you and looking at yeah. our bakery where all the recipes say are family recipes, I feel you're kind of focusing so much on the legacy you're leaving yeah. for your kids and everything. Totally. How important, like, because like you're like even talking about like, that's my mom's recipe, that's my yeah. grandma's recipe. What would you feel as like the like legacy you hope to leave for your kids and yourself on this island? That's exactly why I opened here because we had been here for four years at a time and I was like, they're so happy, but I can't leave here without mm -hmm. roots, right? Mm -hmm. And these are roots for them. I hope that when they have their kids and I'm a grandmother that we come to Bird Bakery after the beach. Mm -hmm. Like that would be my hope for them is that they have an identity here that's something we created during a pretty magical time, you know? Mm -hmm. All things considered, the last four years have been pure magic in their eyes, which is all that matters. How do you help them keep that perspective as a mom? You don't, you just exist. You live yeah. that way, right? Like you can tell your kids what to do, you can, do all the things, but like, it's how you live your life. Like, right, we right. live in gratitude, we live in abundance, we live in just like the moment and adventure, which is what the show was. It was an adventure. Like, it was definitely something totally out of the box for me, but also we don't, you don't always want to be so safe. I love you talking about that too, because I am a stress eater, not a stress baker, but I feel baking helps people like calm down and it's totally, therapeutic. It's therapeutic. Eating a cupcake for me is sort of therapeutic, but well, I feel like people don't talk, it's almost let like- Let me be your therapist. Please, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, But I feel like talking about like kids mental health is such a forgotten topic because mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. almost look like, 
oh, now like they're acting out in high school and stuff. But I'm like, it starts then. And I love that you're being so proactive about it. And what are like some parenting tips? Because you say like living in the moment, being grateful that like parents watching this who might be struggling about how to like make sure their kids feel happy or like safe, but also in the real world. Like, what do you think you could like? I am obsessed with parenting. So this is again, can we just do a whole episode on this? <laughs> Done. I think we have one chance to do it right. And I think a lot of our parents didn't really go to therapy, like very rarely. Oh. So we have so much knowledge and information now. It's not necessarily about making them happy. It's actually like adversity is not the worst thing to happen to children, which is something I really had to keep in mind during my divorce. I'm like, this is not what I envisioned, but also how to pivot is actually the best thing you can teach your kids in life and communication and honesty and openness. And, um, that is like my happy place. And that is all I care to do is yes, create a legacy, but create it with my children having a healthy, happy, balanced life where, um, yeah, nobody can shake them. Strong foundations, baby. Now, That's what it's about. Right. Right. And, and Vogue did call you the coolest mom. <laughs> what is the coolest thing you do as a mom, Elizabeth? Well, I love chatting with them. Like, I wouldn't say this is cool. It's actually maybe a red flag. It's like maybe my toxic trait. But like, I don't want them to go to bed at night. Like, I know they should go to bed at They're seven. They're your buddies. But like, I don't want to not like have our chat. So I mean, even last night, they don't have school today, but you know, we're in bed at seven. I'm like, oh my God, wait, tell me everything. Like, tell me more about what I missed yesterday. Like, I just, they are my favorite humans in the world and there's no one I'd rather hang out with. Um, so I don't exactly like, honor the bedtime like a show. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if that's cool. No, yeah, <laughs> you that's my mom, I would never go to sleep either. I'd be like, Liz, okay, let's do dress up. Let's do yes, hair. Yeah. Let's have a great time. Yeah. And, and also I, I'm, I throw the best slumber parties because I don't really like them at other people's houses for sleepovers. Uh, so like you have to create the space. Ooh. Everyone has to come to us. And they got the treats. Yes. yes the treats. Treats. Course, uh, hello. You should see the snack platters I do. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Yeah. We can talk to you forever, yes. but I kind of want to eat, but yes. so thank you <laughs> so, so much. And congrats on the show. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. And she actually said that the adversity that she faced during during her divorce actually benefited her family and her children. Like, I, I feel like she feels like all they've gone through over the past four years has only made them stronger as a unit. So yeah, she and the family, they're thriving in the Grand Caymans and uh, so is her bakery. And we, we just had a ball with her. We had so much fun with her. And we also had fun with the rest of the cast who some of them didn't have as much fun with Elizabeth while filming. And unfortunately for Cass, she didn't get along great from the start with Elizabeth. Fortunately for us, it was kind of an iconic reality TV moment because Elizabeth basically told Cass, oh, I know your boyfriend. He hooked up with my assistant. Well, and like, that's the thing about Elizabeth. She was telling us like, oh, I'm not a big reality TV fan. I don't really watch reality TV. Reality TV is something that she wasn't necessarily interested in before she signed on to do a reality show. So she was kind of like, am I, am I a good reality star? Like, baby, oh. she was a pro. She wasted no time getting to the mix. But also, Cass wasted no time either going up against, you know, the number one girl in in the group. So, yeah, that was that was a whole moment that we got uh, a little juice from Cass about. And also uh, Craig, who is just the best. <laughs> we also are all ready because y'all don't waste time for the drama. Cass, looking at you because okay. that first <laughs> dinner with you and Elizabeth. Yeah. There's wow. past apps and a lot was of past that, shade. Was that crazy? That was crazy. It was yeah, right off the bat. What was your thoughts watching that, Craig? I was quite appalled. I mean, Elizabeth's behavior, repulsive. Uh, okay, that's an adjective, repulsive. <laughs> what, what was the most repulsive part of it as it pertains to her little uh, meetup about marketing with Cass? Hmm. And I uh, want your take too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, obviously it was a business meeting. Uh, Frank was there, who is yeah, essentially a client of mine. Um, so I wasn't really expecting her to bring up who my boyfriend's past relations were with. Um, but yeah, she kind of just blurred. She out dropped it like it, it was hot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, because the way she was doing it, it kind of felt like she was. It almost felt like a retaliation vibe, where she was like, "Oh, yeah. I can always one up." Like, is that kind of what it felt like? Because it sort of came out of nowhere. In the moment, it kind of felt like that, and that was my first re interaction with yeah. her. So I was quite surprised, actually. I love that, man. We already said we were like, you know, if you ever want to start an OnlyFans, follow your heart. <laughs> yeah, and yes, and we will be your first subscribers. <laughs> and uh, I mean, like, while they kind of were like being a little more silly, and we had some fun getting to know them more, Courtney had to kind of clear a lot of air because, of course, like we said, Elizabeth was married to Army Hammer. 
he also, she, uh, Elizabeth didn't know if Courtney um, spent some time with ARMY. And uh, Courtney's saying that Elizabeth alleged that she was one of the mistresses, which, a real, this is how you know a reality TV rookie, because you can't make a claim like that and expect to just go back to icing your cupcakes, because Courtney had to clear the air. Yeah, and Courtney, like, she, <laughs> I love how she really used this platform to say her piece about it, because it's kind of a crazy thing, like, being accused of being one of ARMY's girls, and then also, apparently, and this is included in the first couple episodes of Grand Cayman, there's that whole story about Elizabeth uh, possibly sending DMs and emails using fake accounts and stuff, and we don't know what's true, what's not, but Courtney felt like she was... The victim of some of those uh, emails and DMs and stuff. So she got uh, she got to clear that up on camera. I don't think she ever got to clear it up with Elizabeth. They I have. Think. I saw a teaser for a sit down. I don't know. They, oh, there is a sit down. There is a sit down. Okay. Well, and I'm she has Chelsea on her side too, who we love. Yes. Oh my God. Ch well, Chelsea. Yes, we love Chelsea so much. But Chelsea also found herself at odds with Elizabeth while filming the show. Which and th that's a whole interesting situation. And we'll just. Let Chelsea explain what happened. How are you preparing to reprocess everything with Elizabeth? I'm not going to reprocess anything. Oh. <laughs> I think it's just been, you know, my experience with her was unfortunately my true experience, and you see that play out. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. I think for me, I kind of made a decision that that's not somebody that's going to be in my circle. Mm. Um, and that's not on any kind of like mean girl energy it's just you know i think we you'll see we did try and have that conversation and it really didn't go well so did it feel good to have a platform to clear up your side of the story with the army of it all you know being accused of being one of his girls yes and the only reason that it felt you know good was because the way she decided to address me was publicly it was on a public forum it was my personal instagram i've got family i have my significant other on there so you know that personal attack and that disrespect was very public so it felt fitting to address it on tv <laughs> <laughs> i love that and chelsea were you how were you supporting courtney with kind of starting the addressing like were there moments where you're like I got your back and kind of how are you processing all of that? Absolutely. Too? Courtney's had my back from day one, as you've seen in the yes. show. So, you know, that's what friends do. We take care of each other in each other's presence and in each other's absence. And you'll see later on in the show. Um, not sure which episode it is off the top of my head. But, you know, Elizabeth very kind of freely speaks negatively about people. And I think she she made a big mistake thinking she could do that mm. around me. Courtney's mm -hmm. nearest and dearest. I won't have it. So, was she and like her speaking negative towards Courtney? Did you feel there were moments where she was speaking negative about you as well? Like, was it kind of one of those well, moments where like, if you're talking about everyone else, I feel like you're talking about me. Well, if you speak negatively about something or somebody or anything that I'm very passionate about, for example, you know, you'll see from the show, I'm a special needs mummy. My son Jacob is autistic. I do a lot of autism advocacy, advocacy work. And, you know, there's there's aspects of that that come up where, you know, comments were made that just were inappropriate and extremely ignorant. Um, so at that point, I had to put her in a place about that as well. Wow, about autism? Yeah, about autism, you know, kind of. I can forgive people's ignorance. You know, if, if you don't understand something, I'm happy to share and, you know, be my educate sons, them, educate yeah. people. That's, that's what I love to do. Mm -hmm. But I don't like it when people kind of try and use that as a tool to try and build rapport mm. if you don't know what you're talking about. Right. Everybody isn't autistic. Mm. We're not all on the spectrum. I know we talk a lot about Bravo on this podcast because it's the reality TV we watch a ton of. Don't worry, it was still around us because we did all these interviews at the presidential suite at the West End Grand Cayman where the Real House of the Potomac took that cast trip that one time and walking in the lobby and near the areas where like Katie and Ashley had at it, uh, we felt like we were on the trip with them. Oh my god, yeah. It, it really felt like we were walking on sacred ground. What was it that Katie said to Ashley? It's like, I, I didn't I didn't mean to call you stupid. I meant to call you dumb. Like, how, how'd that go again? Mm -hmm. Like, because yeah. uh, Ashley was like, why are you insulting my intelligence? She's like, maybe I didn't think you're stupid. Maybe I think you're dumb. And then I mean, Robin uh, and Giselle's reaction to that. So good. They're, they're obviously fans of synonyms. I am too. <laughs> they really, really are. And also, we also need to add about being fans. I don't know if they're fans of synonyms, but there are Elizabeth 
fans in the group. Like, there's people that kind of can vibe with her a little bit. Like, uh, Terry and Dylan, you know, they kind of under, they kind of had a better thought process about her and her energy than everybody else. Yeah, we talked to Terry and Dylan towards the end of the day, and, you know, we had heard a lot from so many of the cast members about how they just didn't really vibe with Elizabeth. Uh, some of the cast members said that Elizabeth really didn't, you know, participate in the filming all too much. But Terry and Dylan, they extended a lot of grace to her. They were like, look, like, there's a side to every story. We didn't get to know Elizabeth very well, but we're going to give her the benefit of the doubt that she is a cool person. What was it like meshing with Elizabeth? It seems like she had difficulty connecting with the majority of the cast. Well, we didn't actually spend a lot of time with her. Um, mm. There was probably only maybe two or three like dinners or mm. parties that she wound up with the with the full cast anyways. Mm. Um, and, you know, we always had like a pleasant conversation, mm. um, but I don't know her very deeply and I would have liked to have got to know her better as an individual. And it would have been nice if she was out mm. at more of the events mm. because a lot of us didn't know each other that well until we spent you know, 16 weeks together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think mm -hmm. the more time you spend with everybody, the more you have a chance to bond. Mm -hmm. So it would have been nice to have more of that time. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah, quite frankly, I mean, I don't I don't know Elizabeth well enough, but it did seem that whenever she was involved in any of the scenes that were, were, were filmed, it was, she was a bit of an outcast and mm -hmm. it definitely felt awkward, you know, not gonna lie about that. Do you feel that it was just kind of her energy? She might just be like, not that, ready to be open because of course this was happening when a lot of stuff was going on in her personal life. Do you think she was mm. holding back because of that or just more of just, that's her? I don't know. I, I don't you know, know how to what? answer that one. She's been through a lot in the last couple of years. Mm. Um, I think I would never even want to gander what she'd be thinking. Mm. Um, I think the whole situation probably would have been a little uncomfortable because we were so close. So it is tough stepping as in as an outsider, not only to the island, but to our group of friends. Mm. Um, we are welcoming, mm -hmm. but you have to put one foot in. You know, it's like, you take one step, we'll take two. Yeah. Yeah. If, you know, just getting to know her a little bit better, did it change your perspective on the army hammer of it all? We never talked uh, about it. That yeah. was never anything that was brought up unless, you know, she chose to. And yeah. for good reason, I could see why she, she was embroiled in that for so long. She mm -hmm. probably wanted to leave that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think whenever that you know, aside. whenever that topic came up for discussion, it was it was crushed pretty quick. I mm. think it was still this it's still very sensitive. Gotcha, know? gotcha. Now before we wrap up, yes. Dylan, yes. we heard this term Dylan the villain being thrown around. <laughs> yes. Uh -oh. yes. What what can you tease about the, the mess you make <laughs> as this series goes on? Um uh, well I think it I think the name rhymes. It's, I like it's a pretty it. good name. Yeah. Hashtag, it, it wasn't me that came up with that name, but my buddies gave me that name after watching, you know, in a couple of the series of the show. But uh, I, I mean, think again, you wear it with pride. Yes. 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 You identify as a villain. I think I I, I do, but there's good villains. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yes. Like Batman bad is villains. technically a villain, if you yes. will. And who doesn't want to be friends or married to Batman? And so, yeah, if, if there's anyone in the group that is a fan of Elizabeth, it is uh, Terry and Dylan. I feel like everyone would agree that, you know, other than obviously Elizabeth, everyone else, the most of the, most of the cast would agree that Elizabeth is the quote unquote villain of the show. But Dylan also cleared that up because he said he is the villain of the show. Yeah. Hashtag Dylan, Dylan the villain. Yeah, yes. oh, it rhymes. You can't you can't fight a rhyme. Right. You you can't fight a rhyme, and you can't fight with people's fears. We've learned on the Cayman Islands because Julian, who we think ish was Liz's buddy, kind of had a weird energy with that. That Salida, who we love. Oh my God! Yeah, Salida they, Ebanks of Victoria's Secret, Angel, like. Class of Heidi Klum and Giselle Bunchen, oh, amazing. Can I tell you, like, being able to talk to a Victoria's Secret model about the Woodbury Commons was a really spiritual moment for me. Oh my God, you guys were like really, really vibing. And by the way, Salida, I, I mean, I don't know if she'll like us saying this, but she was like pretty proud about the way she loves a good bargain. Uh, finding great stuff at an outlet is, I mean, I know the Olympics are coming up and there's no like, BravoCon this year, so Bravo fans and reality TV stars are everybody like, what could we be doing like it? If the Olympics added a bargain hunting sport, because how is that different than speed walking? It's honestly 
not different at all. And actually it, it involves more physical exertion because you're grabbing things and it involves mental math because you're thinking about the discount. And if you get this and you get that, how much more can you get here? You know what I mean? So that's actually, it should, it should be an Olympic sport. And I think that you and Salida should lead that charge and I'll catch y'all in Paris. Uh, wait, okay. Bonjour. Would love. <laughs> yes. Okay. So while we're doing that, uh, because Salida might give me some advice because she tried to help give Julian a little advice about the whole Elizabeth thing. But I don't know how well that went. Julian, did you get any advice from Salida about how to navigate this new on-camera venture as someone who has been on camera for a little bit? Um, no. <laughs> okay. I feel like you didn't need any, though. You don't, yeah, you kind of just steal the You're show natural, when you pop yeah. I love that. He don't need no help. Well, sometimes, hello. Fake it till you make it is what I was doing. Um, no, nah, Salida was great. She, you know, Mama Salida over here. Yeah. <sighs> Always sharing her wisdom and her love. Did she have any wisdom for you when you were told to exit someone's sphere? <laughs> get back in it. <laughs> get back in it. Okay, did we get back in Elizabeth's uh, sphere? We... I said that. What? I said to get back in her sphere. Well, you know, don't, you know, just... Uh, should he not have, <laughs> have re-entered? No, no. Are we gonna have this conversation now? Are we doing it now? We can totally have this conversation, <laughs> now, <laughs> conversation now. No, I only said is that, you know, remember we had the conversation, I was just like, you have to know which sphere you're gonna be in. Yeah. Especially when it comes to friends. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So I don't know, I have yet to watch the show, so I don't know how that ended up for you, but. Well, you know, it was a sphere that I was in for a while and. No longer? Maybe still am. Oh, okay, good. Because we'll have to see what happens. I feel like it is kind of one of those hard things that just in any type of friend group, when like friction starts, even if you're like, we're all friends, like people are like, you have to pick a side. So do yeah. you feel it was kind of like, if you're in her sphere, you couldn't feel as close to the rest mm. of the people? I think there was definitely a few people, um, a few of our, you know, in our group who felt that way. Uh -huh. And it, it was difficult kind of navigating, trying to be friends with this side and trying to be friends with this side. And this side chattering being like, what are you doing? And this side being like, who are these people? I'm like, hello, I'm just in the middle trying to like get you all to like be nice to each other. <laughs> Leave me alone. Right. Um, it was interesting. Was that a tough position for you then with everything that was going on in Elizabeth's life at the time with the army of it all? It was a tough position for sure. Cause I mean like she, you know, she's my friend and I care about her and she's an amazing, you know, mother and she's trying to take care of her kids and she's trying to like open these businesses and all at the same time, you know, just trying to, you know, show you know, my group of friends that she actually is, you know, a good person deep down. And I don't know that that will work. Yeah, because if you guys have seen some of the teasers for the rest of the season, there's this part where Elizabeth is telling Julian, like, you don't belong in my sphere, pretty much. So we had to ask Julian if he is still in Elizabeth's sphere. And that it's it seems a little TBD. Yeah, very TBD. But what is not TBD because I'm pretty sure they're, they told us that they're going on. This is what we loved about this too. Like we were just like sitting and like chatting with all these people that were like, you're about to be reality stars. They're like, what are you like? What? Like they, like it, it was so new to all of them. Of course I'm talking about like Victoria and Trevor who like, oh. I feel like I'm like, I'm, it's kind of thing where I was like, oh, should I text them? It's like, they don't know. Like, no, but I kind of want to <laughs> because me and Victoria have the same birthday and they're going to, I guess I won't say where they're going for the anniversary trip, but they're going somewhere so fun and they were so cute and they met on the island, which we love. Like they both were expats that moved there and they were gonna move back and now seven years later they're together. So we gave, we asked them, I thought it was a polite question you know, to give Elizabeth some dating tips and advice. You can interpret if their response was nice. The Elizabeth you guys got to know, how does that differ from the public persona that you thought? Maybe she would be more I like. think, I mean, she does kind of put, make herself out to be like the girl next door. And I mm. think that, you know, I don't, I don't know her that well. Yeah, we really barely saw but, her during all the filming. I mean, she didn't come to most of the cast get togethers. So I, I mean, don't know her that well, but I honestly don't want to at this point. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah. Well, and I mean, because you guys are two expats that met here and I love that. And now she's a single expat here. Do you, could we give her any dating advice so she can maybe in a year have Just a lovely... Just be a good human. Yeah. And you'll find your person. <laughs> work on yourself and then you'll, yeah, that person will come along. The most important thing is to work on yourself and then you'll attract that right person that's meant to be with you. Getting to know her a little bit, did it change your perception of the Army Hammer situation? 1,000%. Yeah. In what way? Yeah. There's a lot more to that entire story yeah. um, than, you know, we really know. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, like she kind of said, you know, like only she knows the truth, but um, I think there's a lot more than that. I think that's just there's a, a more, cover. Yeah. 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 So, I mean. Yeah, I think overall, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's a he said, she said type thing. But, you know, when you show a person, when you show yourself to a person, you know, just, I mean, yeah. just take it for what it is. And that's can't speak to Army's side, but yeah. from what I've seen from on hers, you know, it, it doesn't sound like it was totally one one sided. It was all Army's fault, to be honest. So, I mean, yeah, there's really a lot more know. to that story than the public thinks they know. We can't wait to find out more about that. <laughs> I love Trevor and Tori. Like, I feel like I don't know. If I, can, I, I love how I called her Tori. Like, her name is fully Victoria, but I feel like I'm like just Tor. on the best friend terms with her. Okay, so Trev and Tor, uh, I do feel like you and I had a really. Oh. special affinity for them because obviously we love a gorgeous couple and we love a gorgeous girl who appreciates a gorgeous spray tan can i tell you that like i use the majority of our lunch with the cast to ask uh Wait. victoria about how she gets that gorgeous glow it's a uh, dolce dolce glow right Is that yes dolce said? glow i was gonna say we can't gatekeep it because it was stunning oh so beautiful i feel like they're like the the nick and jessica obviously because they're newlyweds they're like the nick and jessica of the oh. cast but like before Nick and Jessica got toxic. Yes, exactly. And she's a true Taurus through and through my birthday twin. She has a lot of big plans for what they can be doing this year. So I'm excited for that. Yes. One crazy thing though, that all of them, I loved bonding with them all because of course, like you're sort of like, you guys live on an island year round. Like I'm gel. like what could, what, 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 what could be missing stores? <laughs> Not like, I know. like, for, for, cause like we were like, cause me and Evan, we are last minute impulse shoppers, especially for doing like press and everything like that. We tear up a Midtown Zara, you know, a Nordstrom rack, racks on rack. Like again, the Olympic sport is sporting itself. Uh, but they were like, no, we have to fight up Miami to, to go like shopping for a lot of stuff, which is insane to me. No, I know my mind was blown. Like apparently it's cheaper to book a flight to Miami get whatever you can get while you're there and then bring it back to Grand Cayman because there's all these like insane taxes and then like shipping fees. They say like Amazon is even super expensive because you got to get it all the way to this beautiful remote island, Grand Cayman. And yeah, so that was like insane. So Danny had this like genius question asking Aaron, who's a very fashionable guy. He's very fashionable and he looked really good. He had like Burberry sneakers on with Burberry socks on. And I kind of forget the rest. I was so fixated on the shoes. Same. But Dan- and the pink hair. Oh, and the, and the pink hair and the glasses. And yeah, it was it was a lot of good things going on. But Danny was like, so how much did you spend on your wardrobe this season? And the, the number will shock you guys. It is a secret, um, one of the best kept secrets this island, but it's so beautiful. And, and the people that know about it are like, even tourists keep repeatedly coming back because it is an amazing place. And like you just said, people come and they want to live here, you know, so. Mm. I think it's only going to do positive. And in yeah. preparation for this, and now that, like, because you guys, like you said, there's a bunch of different characters. Characters like to prepare with a lot of stuff. I'm looking, both of you have impeccable outfits. I got to know. Fit. Who, I'm charmed. Who do you think spends the most money on clothes? Like, knowing oh. that they have to turn some looks. Oh. I mean, I'm looking at your Easy. matching Burberry Easy. sneaker yeah, socks. So, <laughs> are you taking the ownership yeah. of that? 1,000%. <laughs> Yeah. 1,000% <laughs> check the fits. If you, I kill it if you every could, scene. Could, do you have in like, well, you know, I know. <laughs> I do this. You do, like, is there a this... guesstimation? Like, how much are we spending on clothes? Oh my God, bro. How much? How much? Like my wardrobe or just this season? Like your first season wardrobe. Your first season wardrobe. <sighs> jewelry or no jewelry? Yeah, jewelry, jewelry is included. included. Yes. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds oh, of thousands. Are you kidding? <laughs> this guy, like, oh, watch alone. Okay, wait, watch what alone much, is like one. Well, this one's. This is the uh, season two. Not hundreds of thousands. I'll tell you that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hundreds. Yeah. Of hundreds. Of, bro, the I'm jewelry not, alone. What was yeah. the biggest splurge? Probably my watch, the AP. Okay, it's worth it though. Oh, Who would you yeah. say is the most stylish of the cast? Are you gonna say yourself, Aaron? I'm gonna. I'm, look, he's gonna say him. I'm gonna. I, it's me. If, if you put me against anyone, I'm always going with me. Okay. Well, I'm going with me. But the second, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm shout out to my boy Juju. Yeah. Julian. Oh, yes. He's the second most fashionable. <laughs> I'll give him a strong second place. Floor, I would love to go shopping with him. With him providing, you know, the swiping part of it. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron can swipe. <clears throat> oh. Swipe right. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah. That too. <laughs> Handsome cat. That, this guy has some handsome people. Well, I guess you have to be handsome. Like living on an island, you're like, I was like, I was able to escape it, not completely sunburned. And uh, my Irish skin really appreciated that. But I know I'm excited for the rest of the season. I feel I'm like the Elizabeth, it is going to be juicy and crazy. 
I know. I feel like we're just getting the first taste of all the juice to come. Like, I feel like it's only going to keep getting better and better. I was going to say, and it comes at a good time, too, because I feel I'm like, I mean, I'm loving my summer houses. I'm loving my Vanderpump Rules in the Valley. Uh, loving Martha's Vineyard. But, like, with no housewives on for the minute, you know, where you're kind of like, but, 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 but where? But where? Like, I feel something is missing, so I'm, like, plopping this in the slot, you know? We're just, yeah, like, does... getting some new shows on rotation. Right, it does kind of give you that, like, luxurious lifestyle feel that we are going to be deprived of for a few months, I, I think, because, yeah, there's no Housewives programming for the summer. I guess, well, we have Dubai coming up. We, we have, have Dubai, Dubai coming up and Jersey so, so soon, which I'm excited for. Yeah. And me and Evan did try to cosplay as Kyle Richards because, like, we tore up the gift shop at the hotel we stayed at. Oh, my God, yes. we were just, like, because Evan was like, I kind of want to look in because I feel Kyle. What I'm like, she 100% would. And guess what? We found some stuff. I found some glasses that kind of resembled Guy Fieri, which I, I felt like were kind of a vibe. Uh, I was obsessed with them. I, yeah, I thought that. Thank you. I thought they were kind of cute. I hope that the cast thought they were cute, too, because I wore them for the majority of our interview. So the, there's that. <laughs> we got hoping. some T-shirts. We got some T-shirts. We had, you know, we had a good vibe. And maybe you don't know there is a chance Evan will wear those glasses while we are on stage interviewing some iconic Bravo celebrities May 16th. We're back at Chelsea Table and Stage. Uh, the show is at 7.30 p.m., I want to say. And Evan, can you let everybody know who they will see if they come? We have the most fun lineup this year. We have our girl Dorinda Medley. You know her as a Roni OG. We have Wes and Jesse, the new boys from Summer House. And then we have Rachel and John Fuda from The Real Housewives of New Jersey. So y'all are definitely in for a treat. And if you don't live in New York City, and you haven't bought tickets, you can come to New York City and maybe get some tickets if yes. you enter our sweepstakes. So Danny, tell them all about the sweepstakes. So if you go to page6.com slash VRT sweeps, enter your email address. There's a chance for you and a friend to have the most VIP experience of your life until you move to the Cayman Islands, of course, uh, and where you get two nights to stay at a hotel, travel, everything you get to meet us at the show and also like our shows we all party after you might you'll be seeing and mingling a lot of fun people so definitely go to patrix.com slash vrt sweeps and have a fun time also like not to brag the weather in new york is so good right now like we don't get this that much so it's the two months you actually really want to go be in new york so if you live outside of the tri-state area run down walk to that link right now and also in case you don't win, because there's, there's only one winner, only just one go to chelseatableandstage.com and buy tickets, because that's also a great option. Yes! It's a, it's a, everyone's a winner when you're at this show, because it's magical. What are you doing here without Dorinda? We hope to see you there.